Hi guys and welcome to my channel Cork and Fruit TV. I'm Olivier and today we have the chance to have two amazing people from New Zealand. Their name is Misha and Oli. Misha is obviously the owner of Misha. Uh, vineyard in Central Otago, New Zealand. Oli is a winemaker. You know what? We're gonna ask them a couple of questions. They're gonna talk about their wine, taste it, and I hope you will enjoy. See you soon. Cheers. Hi, I'm Misha from Misha's Vineyard in Central Otago, New Zealand, and uh, Oli. Hi there. I'm Oli, the winemaker for Misha's Vineyard. Been with them since the start in 2006. So in Central Otago, it's down the bottom of New Zealand. So my husband and I established the vineyard from the beginning. Um, we have 57 hectares on the side of Lake Dunstan. It's absolutely spectacular location. Um, a country that's a very, very new world country. New Zealand only makes about 1% of the world's wine. Uh, down in central Otago, we're about 2.5% of New Zealand's total production. So a really small region, but it's the home of Pinot Noir in uh, New Zealand. So Central Otago is a relatively new wine region. I think the oldest wines are maybe only 25 years old. Yeah, um, early 80s, yeah. Yeah, so we are, uh, vines are now about 15 years old and we've produced 12 vintages to date. We're gonna share with you a little yeah. bit about Pinot Noir, which is um, the main variety from Central Otago. Uh, and in fact, it's like 80% of the grapes that are grown in the region are Pinot. So we actually have a bigger percentage of Pinot in central Otago than in Burgundy. Um, <laughs> we're crazy about Pinot. So Oli, what makes um, Pinot special in central? Uh, a unique climate even within New Zealand. So it's, it's a continental climate. It's a very dry, desert-like environment. So there's a short, sharp season. You get hugely intense fruit. Uh, there's a fresh acidity, there's a brightness, and that climate reflects really in that intensity with the fruit and, and that's what you see in the wine. This is, we've just poured the High Note, which is our main estate Pinot Noir. Um, the High Note 2014. It's named the High Note because my mum was a, an opera singer and um, I trained to be a ballerina. I failed, I grew too tall to be a ballerina. <laughs> but um, the influence of my mum and my theatrical background um, is, in, is um, evident in the names of the wine. So this is the High Note, named after my opera singing mum. So, what do we get on the nose here? I think, well, for a start, 2014 was a great season, so we mm -hmm. had uh, really nice flowering conditions, quite even, and then just a beautiful, calm summer, which, which is not what we always ex expect in that area. Um, so I think there's a lovely balance and fineness to the tannins on the fruit. Uh, and then I think it's classic cherry, raspberry, red fruits. There's a little bit of secondary development. There's a little bit of the mushroom forest floor starting in there, mm -hmm. a bit of complexity. A nice length and a little bit of spiciness from those tannins just give it a really um, nice long sort of finish to it. Um, and nice to start your day with Pinot Noir. We always taste our wines um, with the Pinot first followed by the whites because Misha's Vineyard makes, um, I guess two thirds of our production is Pinot but one third is aromatic whites and they've all got some level of residual sugar so we think it's better to taste the Pinot and then the white wines. A range of white wines uh, include a Sauvignon Blanc, Riesling, um, we make two styles of that, um, Pinot Gris, Gewurztraminer and a late harvest so it's quite a quite a range of aromatic white wines and we think they're sort of the undiscovered um, wines of the region. Everyone knows about Pinot but the aromatic white wines are, are pretty spectacular. Should we try um, a Sauvignon? Out of 15. Um, obviously New Zealand's pretty well known for Sauvignon Blanc but it's a, it's a pretty unique thing for um, Central Otago to be experiencing. We get quite a different style I'd say, it's a very small block, it's low cropping, there's a lot of concentration and density in the wine, um, it's not just about a bright fruit character. Um, almost a little bit more European in some of those Sancerre like expressions um, and that's sort of I guess the schist and the rock and the mineral characters are a big part of what we see in the wine. And this got a little bit of wild fermentation in old oak barrels that gives a little bit of texture and we're finding now sommeliers are looking for what's the, the next thing other than just a, a Marlborough Sauvignon Blanc, what's the sort of next level of expression. Um, so how do you think in the palate this differs from I think from that, Marlborough? I mean, a part of it is it's growing on rock, it's on a steep face that catches a lot of sunlight. It's quite a small area, it's only two hectares of vineyard, so it's quite a unique wine really. It's a small single vineyard Sauvignon. It's not a big commercial uh, production. 
as you say, it's got that little bit of barrel ferment with a bit of the wild character in there, and that gives more texture and, and concentration through the palate. Yeah. And some length. So, yeah. Which is what I think surprises people. That, yeah. You know, they think it's just going to be bright fruit and a little bit simple, whereas there's actually complexity and length through through it. And this one's called the Starlet. Again, a sort of theatrical name because she's fresh and fruity and best enjoyed young. <laughs> Voila. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for listening in. Cheers, Ollie. I'm going to enjoy Cheers, this. Uh... <laughs> nice to be here.